But it's Maggie Mulhern from Modern Salon TV. Look who I got here. It's Hi. Alexa Lozzi. So exciting to I'm see you. To be here. We're here at the GHD event, and she did a whole thing on curl and how fabulous it is. First of all, before we get started, how do people find you? I know everybody already knows how to find you, but for those who don't. Um, on Twitter, it's just Alexa Lozzi. That's the same as my Instagram. And then on YouTube, it's YouTube.com slash Alexa. Okay, well, this is such an honor, and I know you're getting ready to go meet the press, but... Um, the modern audience wants to know from you, how do you get such recognition? You have how many followers on Instagram and Twitter and what, what is your following? Everything kind of universally is now at like 500,000. So it's like every platform is like kind of reaching that right now, which is cool. And um, yeah, I think just having like a personality behind it, that's the most important thing is just having something that people relate to. Like they want to follow that. It's so much easier to relate to someone that they feel like they know, they see something in themselves in than just like a random like, mm -hmm. look at pretty hair. Like they're like, okay, yeah, it's nice to look at, but like I want to see someone. So. so how did it all get started for you? Because I know there are so many hairdressers out there who have phenomenal sites. They're great sites and they only have a couple hundred or a thousand followers. How do you really make it happen? I think for me, I started at a really young age. I've been doing this for like four years. So it's, I think it's about being consistent. It's about posting stuff. All this consistency is so important. You'll see a great blog and you're just like, oh, this is so great. I wish they posted every week and they don't. Like I understand people are busy and stuff, but consistency really is important. And also like having the personality, like I said, like if you, there's something that people can relate to, that changes the game. Okay, and for Instagram, how many times would you post a day for Instagram? I mean, it's different for everyone. You kind of have to figure out what works for you. I post about twice, and that's what I found works for my audience. They really like that. That's a good medium. But some people, like, they can post six times a day, and that's awesome. Some people post once a week, and that works for them. So is it important to follow other people, to like what other people are doing? No, I think if you genuinely like it and you stumble across it and you're like, I really like this, I'm interested in this, I want to follow this, then follow it. But I think just following people for the sake of following people ultimately could just kind of sets you back and it, you're like wasting everybody's time because if you're not genuinely interested it's like that's not a real follower but if you are genuinely interested and that's like a solid that's like a, a supporter of what you do so I guess following people for following is just I don't okay. know. So you are here because you're doing a curl event so what are you going to be telling your audience about what you've learned with the GHD curve? I think just kind of showing how easy it is. I mean, my whole audience is like, they're younger, they're all in school still. So I think being able to show that, you know, you can wake up in the morning and actually curl your hair and have your hair look great for school or have your hair look great for work is really easy and attainable. And there's ways to like curl your hair and make it last and then not damage it at the same time. Okay, last question. What is your tip to the professional hairdresser when working with a client using a curling iron? I would say like, stay really aware of like the curls that they're comfortable with. There's so many times that I've sat in like, the salon chair and it's just crazy curls too much or not enough or they fall out or something always happens so I think making sure that like you push it a little bit but staying pretty true to what like the client and, and that's something you said to me before you said don't suddenly give me a center part yeah, don't check in with you before they start doing for sure I hate when people think that like they're like oh yeah I get to do your hair so they like want to completely transform it it's like no I like I like parting it this way this is how it works for me I feel comfortable this way I think like the best thing you can do as a hairstylist is kind of almost be a therapist in a sense where you like aid to someone's confidence. You help them like through their problems, through making them feel more beautiful. And I think if you change something entirely, that kind of completely defeats the purpose. I mean, there are times when you're doing like editorial, you're doing like a crazy hairstyle, you want to switch it up. But for the most part, I think everyday client just really give them what they're comfortable with and that will be a happy client and they'll continue going back to you. Well, that's so great. And you said that every hairdresser is a therapist and we all know oh, that. Yes, for we, sure. We all know that. Well, thank you so much. Have thank a great event so tonight. It's thank nice you so much for the you. interview. It was nice we'll to meet you. Bye-bye. Okay,